Hello and welcome to another Stephen Mendes video. As you can see, we have another sequential circuit here and my students built this as a lab exercise. So I am interested in showing how to derive the transition table and the total state diagram. The first step is to mark the inputs to the latches. Now clearly you see there on the top right gate that we had to bring out the AND function because that was going in as three inputs into the AND gate. We had to bring out the AND function in order to have a single input as shown with the S2 there at the top. Then we label the outputs, Y1 and Y2. And the next thing that we do is we find the equations for S1, R1, and S2, R2 based on the gates. So a simple looking at the gates will show you that those equations for the RS latches are correct. The next step is to use the latch equation for NAND gates, which is down on the lower right hand side, and to put each latch into that format. So basically we have Y1 equal to S1 bar or R1 Y. So as you can see, we've used the latch model equation to render the expression with S1 and R1 for each latch. We simplify it and then we get ready to draw the Carnot maps and put them together for the transition table. So we have the Y1 on the left and we have the Y2 on the right and we, from the function as shown, we put in the ones. And if it's not as one, it has to be a zero so we zero whatever is left. Over on the Y2, we do the same thing. We will have a one every time X1 is a one. We will also have a one every time Y1 is a one. And we will have a one every time that X2 is a zero and Y2 is a one. So we put them on there and we circle the, the zeros. We now combine the Y1 and the Y2 into the same square, putting the Y1 and the y, the y1 in front of the Y2, as shown. Then by inspection, we circle the stable states, and there is our transition table for the circuit of interest. The next thing we want to do now is to draw from the transition table the total state diagram. It's always convenient to stop to start in the top row at 0, 0, 0, 0. It seems like a good place to start. And there is a stable pair there. So we've drawn the stable pair. So you can switch back and forth between the stable pair with no change in the output then you have two ways to get out of the stable pair, one from each side, and if you inspect, you will see that on the zero, zero, we have to wrap around, so the next one would be zero, zero, one, zero, and on the zero, zero, one square, we can move to the right, which will give us the zero, zero, one, one. There's a one missing, and there it is in the final diagram. So we hope you have fun doing that, but clearly once you've got that, you can see how the diagram relates to the way that we move around the transition table. Now there is 
a cycle there, which we have identified on the right at the bottom, and the 1 to 5 there on the left is questions that I asked the students about the circuit after they were doing their lab. So basically those are the answers to the questions that they had to answer after they had built their lab. And finally, we look at the races. And we see that there are two races. One when we move from 0, 0, 001 to 0, 0, 003. And one when we move from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 1, 0. So we always start our race diagram from the stable state, and when we reach the unstable state that causes the race, we can always go in three different directions, which basically are the three other rows in that particular column. So, that's it. Now, it's a non-critical race because whichever path the race takes, whichever uh, state wins the race, the end result is the same. As you can see, we will end up on the stable state 1, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.